Over 80 years prior, the last defenders of Constantinople, led by their brave emperor and his brother, abandoned the holy city as they realized there was no hope left and they went on an adventure into a brand new land where they eventually established the new Roman society of Elysia. Separate from Europe for over 80 years, the Elysians have turned into a massive empire, branched out and established their own culture, the Elysian culture, which is a mixture of Greek Romans as well as native tribes. The Elysians have encountered new friends like the Norse Vikings of Vinland and have established their own colonies such as Kikladia as well as established great relations with other civilizations that left the old world such as the Albanians of Skanderberg and even had a breakaway state Spartania that is a warlike nation that Elysia might come to regret at a future point in time. But throughout its adventure into the New World, Elysia has had one thought on its mind, going back to the motherland. Should we choose as Elysians to go back to the Old World, a completely changed European continent awaits us with new dangers and perils, as well as old enemies, I'm looking at you Ottomans. But there's still quite a way to go before we get back to the Old World, as we still need to completely establish our domination over the new world and ensure that we use all of the economic might of this new world to fund our future expeditions into the old one. And if you miss Constantinople so much, you can rebuild it yourself in City Skylines only $20 and it includes most of the DLCs plus the best part is that you can actually adjust where your money goes. Also let me know if you want me to do a City Skylines video because I'm thinking of doing one since I actually enjoyed the game quite a bit and use my link in the description. With the re-establishment of the Hippodrome we can start our grand races and let's choose to bet on either the blue or the red team. Red is my color. Let's see if we get our money back. Oh if he just lost a ducats. And our team was victorious, granting us double the amount that we've invested in this bet as well as a bit of prestige on the side. We shall use this money to build fortifications around our Elysian heartlands as we need to do our mission of Parabellum. Basically, it's time to get ready for war. In order to further our diplomatic ties with the neighboring ally of Cahokia, we need to take out the Shawnee tribe and integrate them into our empire, building a road network between our empire and Cahokia in the process. On their way to the Shawnee lands, our armies have encountered a brave warrior called Slumbergun. Nobody knows the origins of this man, but we shall randomly put him in charge of our armies, for we trust Slumbergun. He does have a bit of an appetite for killing the natives, which reminds us of a previous similar warrior with the last of the Shawnee cities under our control, we now have direct access to the Osaji, another primitive tribe in between us and our beloved ally of Cahokia. And by building fortifications around the Elysian heartland in the mountains and hills of Skia, Detis, as well as Sonio, we can do Parabellum, getting one step closer to complete domination over the New World, especially over the eastern coast, which we have directly claimed every single province of. Since the rediscovery of our old homeland, adventurous individuals from all over Europe have begun making the perilous trip to the New World. Despite their interest, many European explorers avoid our territories, wary of people they had long thought perished at sea. Despite that, our harbors and ports are opening their doors, offering preferential treatment to European merchants, and this paves the way for a brand new opportunity opportunity when it comes to trade and establishing better relations with the old world. We have three options. We can either allow trade with the Europeans and have a restriction on this trade or we can just go ahead and let everybody enjoy unrestricted trade or on the opposite we can also isolate ourselves from the old world and I think we need to keep our secrets for ourselves. It's better if the old world people mind their own business. This option might come back to haunt us in the future 
because of our decision to isolate ourselves we cannot get the institution from the old world but luckily for us our Vinland neighbors chose to get on board with the Europeans and allow them into their ports and harbors which means we might be able to get the tuition from Vinland. Our Vinlandian brothers ask us for help against the Huron and Elysium will answer. Let's teach these natives European steel or better yet Elysian steel. Truly not a match for the great Elysian fire wielding flamethrowers. Andronicus brings a flammenwerfer. At least our western front is secured and we're not at- wait wait what are you doing Slondenberg? Stop it! No don't attack the natives now! Spare the children Slondenberg don't be a murderer oh you gone done it you wiped out the entirety of this nation against Slondenberg it's a really good thing there's no international tribunal we might as well completely annex and silence everybody who's left alive in these lands so nobody knows what happened here this shall forever be buried in the annals of Elysia we've also completed the Appalachian mountain paths that increase the amount of settlers we can get in these areas making it easier to reach other parts of this land. Well, looks like Vinland made peace with uh, Huron and they took a few provinces. We actually border Vinland now. Oh, they even gave us some provinces from Huron. They gave us Borea and I believe something else around here. Oh, they gave us uh, Neolimani. Oh, look at this, boys. Vinland is offering to give us colonialism. Of course we shall accept this kind offer and we're also sanctioning an official war into the southern parts here to finally connect the south tip of our continent with the rest of our nation. And since we are doing these wars, we might as well kill off the rest of these natives here for them pretty borders that we always wanted. Whilst we were attacking their tents, the natives have done a surprise attack in the north of our nation. We need to rush our troops and relieve our lands of these filthy barbarians before they really hurt themselves. Thousands of Greek men and women have been ravaged by the barbarians, especially the men for some reason, so we really need to stop this. All of this ravaging, together with the sight of a comet in the sky, has made our society a little bit less faithful in the government, losing a bit of stability in the process, but no worries, we'll get that stability back by organizing a public orgy as a real Roman society. Ever since our flight from Europe and establishment in the New World, our people have not forgotten about Yannis the Eighth, the last Byzantine Emperor, and his brother, the first Elysian Emperor. We will commission the greatest statue in honor of these amazing emperors that built our nation's foundations, our founding fathers. Since we vanquished the armies of Etowa and Chokotau, we can now get all of their lands and kill the remainder of their people, Replacing them with true Elysian boys. Oh, I just realized not all of their armies were dead, but apparently they're now fighting their old friends. Native on native fights, my favorite type of fights. Begonia heathen scumbags. We've crushed the spirits of these natives and we've taken all of their lands and women, vastly expanding the borders of our empire. But we do have 120 overextension, so we need to cool down for a little while and consolidate the newly established established uh, provinces. Whilst we were defending ourselves against the vile barbarians, the Spanish dared to colonize the islands of Turks. This is not acceptable. Turk islands are rightful Elysian clay. And right now they're allied the English and the Portuguese, so fleet-wise, oh my god, they have 138 ships. The English as well, and the Portuguese have some pretty strong fleets, but Spain is insanely powerful. They're the number one great power right now, above the Ottomans and France, and we come in fourth. So this is not going to be an easy battle, that's for sure. We need to prevent them from taking too many provinces in the New World. Essentially, I want to get all the Floridian lands before they manage to get there. And I just realized the Albanians of Skandenberg colonized four provinces right next to our capital. I mean, I know we're allies and everything, but what is this? This is not acceptable. This is our territory here. Believe it's time to say bye-bye to the old alliance. We've been insulted once. 
one too many times by these Albanians and they need to pay for it. It seems like Spartania needs our help against the natives in central Laconia here. So we're going to help them out. We might as well attack our own natives here. So we have an easier time accessing the Spartanian lands. Seems like the Spanish have discovered our spies, but not to fear. We can use them still to get some of their maps. And look at that 76 provinces we can discover in Brazil. Let's check out what's happening in Brazil. Oh my schnitzel lord. We just found out a brand new continent and it seems like the Portuguese have already settled in these lands. For that matter the Portuguese have also settled right next to us and I'm not really happy about this transgression of theirs. The Varangian order is definitely brave. Look at them charging the barbarians all by themselves. I'm gonna help them out of course. I'm not gonna let them fight by themselves. It's insane how they have 20 discipline. That is absolutely amazing and we also will be attacking the Albanians. They used to be a part of our nation and they shall be again a part of our nation. With the natives completely out of our lands we can do a place in the sun getting permanent CBs against any overseas nations on our continent including the Castilian West Indies over here. Our place in the sun will be determined by ourselves. Looks like Spain also is trying to grab some land from the Albanians. We gotta make sure we take as many provinces as we can before the Spanish do. With the increasing effectiveness of gunpowder based weapons like cannons, the usage of weapons like Greek fire is declining. However, despite the usage of Greek fire in the navies not being as important, it does mean that we can use it more in our armies, gaining an extra 10% infantry combat ability for our units in the process. That's right. And Monikas did bring the Flammenwerfer. And it is also time to make peace with the uh, Albanians. We're taking all their provinces on the mainland as well as we're getting a bit of a foothold in the Albanian heartlands since I have a strong suspicion that Albania is not going to exist for too much longer. The descendants of the Frankish and German mercenary soldiers that fled to the New World with us and that colonized the Andronicon Delta have made way for a mixture of Elysians with definite German Germanic influences called the Illyrics, which is a bastardization of the Germanic name of our realm, meaning that every culture in the body regions become Illyrics. So far we have four Illyric areas in the south as well as a couple more Illyrics in the north. Essentially Elysians that speak with a funny accent. As expected, the Spanish have completely annexed the Albanian country and the Portuguese have also sneaked their way into the New World. They They've already started trying to cut us off from the central Laconian parts of Spartania. With the standardization of our currency, we also have founded a gold mine in the province of Chaos. This gold will come in handy, but our economy right now is thriving. We're getting quite a few extra ducats that we are continuously reinvesting in our nation. Actually, refugees from the Albanian nation have managed to establish themselves in the south continent with one remaining province that is a gem producing province perhaps the Albanians would be happy enough to give these lands to us in the future. We've reached the point in our nation's history when we need to make the most important decision we've ever made. We can abandon our Roman heritage which means we lay waste to any sort of a claim we might have in the old world, abandon this continent to its faith and let the Ottomans and these old nations here do whatever they want or we we can begin the invasion effort and start our expansion in the old world, reclaiming what is rightfully ours. Let the invasion begin. Our military elites now know all the secrets of the European fire powder and are currently introducing it into our own armies and navies. With their technological advantage negated, we're now able to seriously consider a large scale invasion of the continent across the sea. We've chosen to secure the supply lines. We can secure the Western Mediterranean islands, the eastern Mediterranean islands, the Straits of Gibraltar or the Atlantic port. As our invasion of the old world continues, our emperor and the war council receive daily reports on the progress of the campaign and enemy troop movements from the safety of our capital. A Varangian on the council suggests that if we were to take control of the island of Malta, it would provide them with a fortress in the center of the Mediterranean Sea from which to launch an assault on Hellas proper. Considering that Malta indeed is a 
really great target, we're gonna change our supply lines target to the Western Mediterranean islands, since those islands include the island of Malta, and make it an easy target for us. Our invasion force is about to land on Malta, reclaiming what was once ours. Burn ya Malti scumbags! Barrage the fort, nobody has time to wait for these sieges, sir. A young lady from the royal court by the name of Constantinia, a distant relation of the old ruling family, as well as a daughter of a prominent Simakoi chief hailing from New Alexandria, has shown remarkable skill in combat, as well as great logistical knowledge. I think her role is best suited to serve the entirety of our nation, as our brand new army advisor. And with Malta, we have secured our invasion supply lines, getting some massive bonuses in the meanwhile. Our nation is ready to undertake what will be the greatest challenge since our flight from Europe all those decades ago. Where should we establish our base of operations? We can choose Athens, the home of the philosophers, Selanik, Sparta, or Rhodes. I think it would be wisest to get Macedonia for the core creation cost reduction that it offers. And with this, we can start our invasion of the old Ottoman Empire with the invasion CB that offers only 25% aggressive expansion. However, we do need to bring a lot more units here before we do start that invasion. We shall make the Ottomans our brand new rival as well since we can. The most surprising thing though is how Bosnia has three separate provinces not connected to each other and yet is still alive. Oh, it's because they allied everybody in Europe. Oh my god, those alliances. By Imperial Decree, we're building the largest fleet Elysia has ever seen if we are to stand a chance against the Ottoman fleets. I was wondering why my game was la- I, I mean, why the world of 1563 was lagging, and apparently it's because the War of the Protestant League has triggered, and all of Europe is divided, half of Europe fighting the other half. This is a great opportunity actually for me to enforce my demands on the Ottomans. I just noticed the Ottoman fleets got completely crushed by the Castilians. I'll give it a few more months, I think it might actually be viable for us to invade the Ottomans is directly right now. Apparently the Timurids in Morocco have debt so they are not gonna help the Ottomans which is perfect. Let's go ahead and start taking our cities back. Let's start with Selenik which is where our invasion will begin. I also only did this because the Ottomans lost half of their navies fighting the Protestant League or actually fighting the Catholics I guess. And most importantly most of their armies are already busy in the Lithuanian and Polish lands so it's gonna give me the time I need to bring the rest of my invasion force to Selenik. Of course we're gonna barrage this and we're also gonna be assaulting it. We need to take this fast. Come on boys, come on. Let's take this before the Ottomans come home. We got the We got it. We got Selenik, everybody. We got Selenik. Let's bring the rest of the army now. Let's go, boyos. We seized the city that held great significance to our ancestor Helens. Holy mother of God, I actually got 10% morale of armies, 20% siege ability and I get the city of Selenik. What? I get it now? Oh, that is amazing. Well, the Ottomans are coming back home now, so let's see how the fights are gonna go. We should have an advantage. Our troops are considerably better than their units, so we will try and fight this defensively and hopefully win. We got way less troops than they have in uh, Europe right now. Finally, our units have reached the city walls. If I assault it now, then the Ottoman troops most likely will try and kill off my weakened units. Please fall Constantinople. Oh god, 71% for real right now? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Take that city. Take it right- Are you kidding me? If that reaches 90%, I'm gonna quit this freaking campaign. Please fall. There you go. It actually fell, boys. We're crushing the spirits of the Ottoman EVs. The banners wave from on high atop the ruined walls. The Theodosian walls were once the grandest in the world, but our foe, decadent and fat, has allowed them to fall into decay. And our fury overcame the spirits of the defenders. Roman splendor triumphs once again. Constantinople is ceded to us. Oh my lord. And the culture is Greek. Okay. Now I have a question because I'm not sure if we should keep this as Greek or turn it to Elysian. But uh, holy Constantinople everybody, holy Constantinople. That means we can do this mission as well, back to the motherland. Now that we've retaken Constantinople, we've had the opportunity to properly uncover and explore the old imperial library, including hidden sections that our enemies never quite managed to reach. This allows us to produce Byzantine silk in our capital 
capital of Elysium. But the war is not over, we still need to take all the Greek provinces in this war from the Ottomans. Trebizond is still alive! What? How on earth did that happen? They're allied to Russia. We've also trained 20 marines that we're gonna bring over to the European front. And the marines are in Anatolia, it is time to wreak havoc. Everybody knows Elysian marines are the best soldiers in the world. The army quality difference between our troops and the Ottomans is actually amazing. What was left of the Ottoman fleet is now at the bottom of the ocean, and by ocean I mean the Mediterranean Sea. And it looks like the Peace of Westphalia was signed, which means that neither the Catholics nor the Protestants won. And it also means that any religion can now become the HRE Emperor. I also believe we have more than enough war score now to get what we want. I guess I'm not gonna go for the war reps. That ya go. That is actually enough war score. 115, uh, let's go. As we continue our liberation across our ancestors' lands, we seem to have trouble with the overseas administration here. Greeks that are willing to fight for our cause have had trouble enlisting in the army and taxes seem to be getting lost somewhere between the people and our treasury. We should also take advantage of this moment and attack Mantua which is allied to Crete and this way we can take the last remaining Greek holdings in the Balkans that are not yet a part of our country. Let's just assault them and fry them up so we take this province quicker. Well this war was uh, pretty quick, I didn't even need to land on Mantua's actual provinces. Can I get some money? I can get close to 100 ducats. Yeah, you know what? This is A-OK -okay with me. As long as I got my Crete and my Noxos back, it makes me happy. And we also need to take Cyprus from the Mamluks, so let's go with that war too. Have to say, the invasion modifier that we get whenever we use the invasion CB is insane. <laughs> I honestly wish that was in the base game as well, because it makes such a massive difference. Vanmo Assaltio, and we've taken the Cyprio. I don't think we can do that now. No, I think we need to take Cairo. Avec Lesigius Maximus Capitalius Mamelukius. Let's give him some fire, boyos. Let's give him some fire. And Daria go 36 days plus 71. We basically got Cyprus. Invasion of Hellas is complete. After many hard fought battles and long sieges, all of the Greek provinces are now ours. And until the end of the game, we get successful invasion, army tradition, legitimacy, colonists, and prestige. A new hope for our people, indeed. We got permanent claims on most of the historical Byzantine provinces. And with the Looking Inwards mission, we've basically changed the way that our empire works and upgraded a lot of our older provinces to actual farmlands, as well as we've gotten a special CB, let's say. To celebrate our conquests and victories in Greece, we will be building a Grand Marble Emperor's Temple, and we can choose Choose what it offers us, be it mainly missionary strength and tolerance of the true faith, blender, merchant trade power, as well as loyalty for the estates. Okay, these are all pretty trash, not gonna lie. I'm gonna go for the uh, merchant trade power, I guess that's pretty decent. And let's offer the Vikings an offer they cannot refuse through which they become our subjects. They are now an imperial associate of Elysia, meaning the new world pretty much belongs to us since uh, the north is ours, Spartania is our ally as well. We can also settle the Varangians on Malta. I'm gonna do that. I don't mind giving a few extra provinces to the Varangian guard since they've been extremely useful in my wars up until now. Our journey took us around the entire world before we could reclaim our heritage and our legacy. And now that we are here, here, perhaps it's time to restore the Roman Empire to its actual extent. And until the next time, check out this awesome Texas Pirate Confederacy video. And I really want to thank all my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers for the amazing support you guys have been offering. I really wouldn't be able to maintain this channel without all of your help.